fact, uh, Jim Hazlett can, he's passing out envelopes and then he'll just come right back and take the offering uh, during the service. So make sure and see Jim or someone else that has the container for the offering today. Uh, so thanks for, so thankful for Terry Breath and her ministry in helping to sign and also to Jeannie. That is really, really great today. Lots and lots of folks have made this possible. We've never done it before. It's something totally new. And we're thankful that you came today to worship the Lord. The church is open if you have an emergency and need the restrooms, but we trust you'll not have to leave your vehicles. Uh, just giving you a heads up, we're planning to have another drive-in service on Sunday, May the 24th to honor our four high school graduates, Faith Dale, Adam Miller, Harrison Peacock, and Rayleigh Sutherland. And our goal for this service is really to make this a very, very special service for them. This has really been a different year for all of our students, but especially our seniors. And there's a lot of things they've missed out on. So we want to do everything we can to make this a very, very special service for them. Uh, we'll not have a picnic like we normally do, but uh, at the picnic we always have a program and we, uh, we roast, I mean we honor them. And so uh, we want to do that in that service on the 24th of this month. Uh, let me just make this announcement today. Uh, I know that you are remembering the Jenkins family in prayer. <clears throat> I know that you're remembering the Rose family in prayer. Continue to uphold them and lift them up in prayer. If uh, you provided meals for Ruth Ann Rose, all the dishes are in the lower level on the big brown table. You can go in there today and pick up those dishes if you'd like to. Uh, Andy and Andrea have brought the dishes back. And uh, one of the things that we love at First Baptist, we love to sing the family of God. It goes like this. I'm so glad I'm a part of the family of God. I've been washed in the fountain, cleansed by His blood, joint heirs with Jesus, as we travel this sod for i'm part of the family the family of god isn't it great to be together today as the family of god at first baptist church let's bow together in prayer at this time our loving father i'm so thankful today for this unique and wonderful privilege that we have to gather together. I'm thankful, Father, for each and every one that has made their way here. I'm thankful today for Carla Sutherland and Hannah McCabe who are videotaping this. And Father, we're, we're trusting that it's going out live on both of our church Facebook accounts right now. And Father, we're planning to post it on YouTube later in the day as well, so we just trust that everything will go according to plan. And Father, today we, we just want to remember the special needs that we face as a nation and that we face as a church. Father, I'm praying today for the sick and their families. I pray that the Lord would heal them and comfort them. Father, I'm praying for the health care workers, for those who are on the front line treating the sick, that the Lord would protect and strengthen them. Father, I'm so thankful for all of the wonderful healthcare workers at First Baptist Church and, and their families. I thank you, Father, for Crystal Burnetti and Laurie Barney and Michelle Barnett and Lola Barnett and Debbie Barnett and Sherry Bishop, Heidi Bloom, Stacy Clark, Kim Dimmick, Dr. Rick Lyons, Dr. Jamie Long, uh, Kylie Norman, Aaron Paul, Marence Mar Pence, Melissa Pence, Lynn McTavish, Denise McCracken, Karen Ruby, Karsten Ruby, Brock Schaefer, Becky Sheridan, and Dr. Holly Thatchick. And Father, if we missed any, we, we know, you know that we did not intend to do that. 
We're thankful for the law enforcement officers and first responders. We thank you for Brian Alinsky and I think of Chuck and Debbie McTavish, his son and daughter-in-law that are also serving with the Pennsylvania State Patrol. We we'll lift them up in prayer today. We thank you, Father, for the correction officers who are in the prisons. We know we have many from our church family. I thank you for Troy and Joe Hoyt, Rick Gall, Bob McTavish, Lonnie Miller, Dan Bishop, and all the others who are serving in the prisons today. Father, I thank you for the truckers, those who are uh, keeping uh, the groceries and keeping things in the stores so when we go we have supplies that we can purchase. I pray for Roger Johnston and Chris Samsell and Rich Smith and Charlie Williams and Jody Matulich and the other truckers, Father. And then we want to lift up the vulnerable, those who are especially vulnerable to this terrible COVID-19. We pray that the sickness would pass over them and that they would rely on others for help. Father, I'm praying this morning for the unemployed, those who have lost work and are losing income during this crisis. I pray, Father, that you would supply for their needs. We pray for today for our leaders, for our president, all of our national leaders. We pray for our governor. We pray, Father, for our state leaders and for our local leaders. We pray, Father, that you would help them to make wise decisions and do what is best for all. Father, I'm praying for our students. These are different days. They're, they're studying at home. It's stressful times, often for families. And Father, we lift up our students who are out of school and at, doing their schoolwork at home. We pray for their families. We pray, Father, that you give them patience and discipline. Be with all those folks who are working at home as well during these days. And Father, I pray for our churches. And we pray for our ministry leaders that they would know how to best show the love of Jesus Christ at this time. And Father, we would not want to forget our missionaries today that are scattered around the world. Many are quarantined, and today we pray for their physical needs, their safety from this uh, COVID-19, and all the other needs that they're facing. We're thankful that the characters are here in the States at this time. And then, Father, I pray for those families who are walking through the valley of the shadow of death, those who have lost loved ones due to COVID-19, and the family of Morley Jenkins, and also for Ruth Ann Rose, we lift them up as they walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Father, we're thankful that we can assemble together for this drive-in service. We ask that you would bless our time together in Jesus' precious name, amen. A little while ago on Facebook, I saw that the characters, all four of them, recorded victory in Jesus. Now, I didn't know that Rick and Carol sang. I knew that Matt and Rebecca sang, but I didn't know that Rick and Carol sang. They sounded pretty good on that video. So I just told them, this is their premier live performance. And they're going to sing Victory in Jesus, and they're not singing for themselves. They are singing to honor the Lord. Amen. And truly, you would agree with me, what we need today is victory in Jesus. God bless. Amen. You know, we lost Ruth Ann, we lost Morley, and uh, just recently, well, within the last four months, uh, I lost a couple dear friends down the shadow ministry there, uh, Jim and John Welker. So you might say, hey, Rick, how, does that, how do those things affect you? Well, like I told a guy one time, there, there's a tear now and again, we don't sorrow as others sorrow that have no hope, praise the Lord. When somebody's repented and turned to Christ, following him, I guarantee you they're going home. What did David say about the little boy? He can't come to me, but I can go to him. So praise the Lord. We're going to see our loved ones, those that belong to Christ, uh, when we get home with them. Um, when I look at uh, the, the words to this song, I realize that faith comes by hearing. That's what this guy must have been thinking about when he penned these words. 
So here we go. <clears throat> I heard an old, old story How a Savior came from glory How He gave His life on Calvary To save a wretch like me I heard about His groaning Of His precious blood's atoning and I repented of my sins and won the victory. Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me and bought me with his redeeming blood. He loved me ere I knew him and all my love is due him. He plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing flood. I heard about His healing, of His cleansing power revealing, how He made the lame to walk again and caused the blind to see. And then I cried, Dear Jesus, come and heal my broken spirit. And somehow Jesus came and brought to me that victory. Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me and bought me with his redeeming blood. He loved me ere I knew him, and all my love is to him. He plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing flood. I heard about a mansion he has built for me in glory. And I heard about the streets of gold beyond the crystal sea. About the angels singing and the old redemption story. And some sweet day I'll sing up there the song of victory. Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me and bought me with his redeeming blood. He loved me ere I knew him, and all my love is to him. He plunged me to victory. Beneath the cleansing flood, he launched me to victory. Beneath the cleansing flood. Amen. <laughs> amen, amen, amen. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. He launched me to victory. Well, I want to encourage you to take your Bibles. And uh, I think Brother Jim has taken the offering while we're doing this, or you've already taken it, Jim? Okay, he's, he's coming around, going to take the offering, but uh, take your Bibles and just open with us to Proverbs chapter 1. Proverbs chapter 1, and also Proverbs chapter 6. I want us to look at <clears throat> verse 8 and 9 from Proverbs 1. The Bible says, Hear, my son, your father's instruction, and forsake not your mother's teaching, for they are a graceful garland for your head and pendants for your neck. And then in Proverbs chapter 6, at verse 20, My son, keep your father's commandment and forsake not your mother's teaching. Bind them on your heart always, Tie them around your neck. When you walk, they will lead you. When you lie down, they will watch over you. And when you awake, they will talk with you. For the commandment is a lamp and the teaching a light, and the reproofs of discipline are the way of life. Let's pray together. Our loving Father, we thank you so much for this Mother's Day 2020. Surely a different Mother's Day than we've ever experienced before. It's not possible for us to gather as families like we normally would. 
But Father, we just ask that as we have opened your word, that the Holy Spirit of God would use the word of God to minister into our hearts and our lives. Bless our time, I pray, in Jesus' name, amen. Many of you know that my mother Louise Ardry grew up here in Kervinsville. She was the daughter of George and May Ardry. They lived at 400 James Street on Irwin Hill. The Ardry family attended another church here in Kervinsville at the time, basically because it was a thing to do on Sunday to be accepted in the community. My mother's father, my grandfather, was a prudential insurance agent. He was the district manager. At that particular time, the churches in Kervinsville united together to hold a revival meeting. And my grandfather, George Hardry, went to that revival meeting and was gloriously and wondrously saved. And because of that, uh, they started to attend the First Baptist Church of Kervinsville. And the reason they started to attend this church was because the evangelist in the revival meeting had been a Baptist. And my grandpa got saved under a Baptist preacher and started to attend this church. My mother was saved as a child at home. The family was very involved in First Baptist Church. My mother graduated from high school and attended practical Bible training school where she met my father Everett. They were married in the old First Baptist Church on Thompson Street that is no longer there. My parents started their, their honeymoon by being on deputation with Baptist Mid-Missions. They wanted to serve the Lord in Panama. God provided for them and they headed off to Panama. I was born in Panama, but then they returned to the United States a few years later because of my mother's health. My dad pastored in New York, Pennsylvania. Then when I was 10, they moved to Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Dad started a church there and five years had it up to over 300 and uh, resigned, went back with Baptist Mid-Missions for the next 35 years, having a ministry to the migrants of South Florida. First Baptist Church of Kervinsville supported my parents financially and prayerfully the years they were in Panama and the years they were in South Florida with Baptist Mid-Missions. My mother, Louise Ardry Osterhout, was promoted to heaven on December the 19th, 1991, 28 and a half years ago. Some of you know that story, but probably some of you did not know my family background with Kervinsville and with the First Baptist Church of Kervinsville. A few minutes ago, I shared this verse from Proverbs chapter 1, verse 8. Hear, my son, your father's instruction, and forsake not your mother's blessing. That is a verse that I want us to focus on today. Forsake not your mother's teaching. Don't forsake your mother's teaching. I read of a California mother of 10 with the 11th child on the way. <laughs> wow, that was having your quiver full. One day her five-year-old son was making even the simplest chores difficult to accomplish. As she said, Daddy was on my heels no matter where I went. Whenever I stopped to do something and turned back around, I would trip over him. Several times that day, she patiently, patiently suggested he find some other things to do, find something fun to do. And then he finally responded, Oh, that's all right, Mommy. I'd rather be here with you. Boy, that would make a mother feel good, wouldn't it? Well, that mother got quite frustrated that day. She had several other incidents that happened, and finally she asked him, Denny, why are you acting this way? And here's what she said. He looked up at me with his green eyes and said, Well, Mommy, in my Sunday school class, my teacher told me to walk in Jesus' footsteps, but I can't see him, so I'm walking in your foot steps. Wow. There was a five-year-old boy who had been listening to his Sunday school teacher. My teacher told me to walk in Jesus' footsteps. 
all the wisdom of a five-year-old. I can't see him, so I'm walking in yours. Isn't it amazing what we can learn in Sunday school? Even five-year-old children can learn great principles in Sunday school. This morning, I'm going to look at this verse of Scripture from Proverbs, and I'm going to take a little bit different approach with my message today. For an outline, I'm going to use some of the famous quotes my mother often used. Plus, many of you here today, your mothers may have used these very same famous quotes. Then I want to draw some life lessons from these quotes. You remember, at least I remember, as a child, whenever you were going somewhere that required an overnight bag, mom would always remind you, make sure you have clean, what? Underwear. Why? In case you get in an accident. I can remember hearing my mother say that. Here's another one. Sitting on the living room floor, how many times did you hear these words? Don't sit too close to the television. Why? It's bad for your eyes. And then at the supper table, you heard this. At least we did when I was growing up. Clean your plate. Why? There are starving children in India, Africa, or any foreign country who would love to eat that. And then if I asked mom if I could go to Johnny's house, maybe you ask your mom if you could go to Susie's house, she'd say those, that famous line, ask your father. Now, let's take each of those four thoughts and develop them just a little bit and draw some life, life lessons from them. Number one, clean underwear. Mom always warned you, <laughs> I sure don't need those papers today, Mom always warned you to wear clean underwear in case you were in an accident. I don't need that. With that little piece of advice, your mother did a number of things all at the same time. If your friends were present when she said that, she embarrassed the daylights out of you. But she also taught you good hygiene and personal grooming with a lesson you would not soon forget. She taught you that life was uncertain. She taught you to expect the unexpected in case you are in an accident. And most importantly, she instilled within you a sense of, oh, I hate to say it, healthy shame. She taught you there were things to be ashamed of, that you should always do what's right, even if it's unseen. If your secret was disclosed, would you be ashamed of what you had done or of what you had left undone? Let me illustrate. The Statue of Liberty was unveiled in New York Harbor in 1886. It is 151 feet tall, 10, 15, excuse me, 15 stories high. It's in the middle of the harbor. And it wouldn't be until at least 1908 that the first plane would fly overhead. That would be 36 years after the Statue of Liberty was built. Yet Barhodai designed Lady, Lady Liberty with a part in her hair. Just think if he'd cut corners and hadn't put a part in her hair. It wasn't still another 36 years that anybody would ever see the top of that particular Statue of Liberty. There's a text in the Old Testament, and here in Numbers 32, 23, the Bible says, But if you will not do so, behold, you have sinned against the Lord, and be sure your sin will find you out. Think of that verse with me this morning. Be sure your sin will find you out. Hebrews 4.13, the Bible says, And no creature is hidden from his sight, but all are naked and exposed to the eyes of him to whom we must give an account. I'm just reminding all of us today that nothing in all creation is hidden from God's sight. 
everything, absolutely everything, is uncovered and laid bare before the eyes of him to whom all of us must give an account. Always do right, even when others can't see or when no one seems to be looking. Otherwise, you might be embarrassed. I heard about a young man who was seriously injured in an auto accident and was rushed to the nearest hospital. He recounted one of the scenes he remembers from fading in and out of consciousness and not knowing the extent of his injuries, a nurse was cutting his blue jeans off with scissors. When she got about to his knee, he heard her explain, oh, with a loud gasp. What had just happened was he was a drug user. And that nurse had just discovered his roach clip, that alligator clip that was tied on the inside of his pant leg, and she discovered the drugs that he had hidden there. The Bible says, be sure your sins will find you out. And by the way, if you question your mother's wisdom, you can put it to the test. Wear dirty underwear, and you're guaranteed to get in an accident. Now here's number two. Don't sit too close to the TV. Mom told you not to sit too close to the television because it was bad for your eyes. Oh, what a truth that is. Now I'll tell you, growing up, we didn't have a television. Some of my friends had televisions, but we never had a television until I was about 12, 13, maybe 14 years old, I don't remember exactly, but uh, I had started mowing lawns in Florida at 10, and uh, I had more lawns to mow, I made good money mowing lawns, and finally I took some of that money and I went and bought a television, the first television our family ever had. And my mother still said, even though I bought the television, don't sit too close to the TV. Now my mom may not have realized it at the time, but my mom, and your mom if she said that, was teaching theology. The Bible says in Luke chapter 11 verse 34, Jesus said your eye is the lamp of your body. When your eye is healthy, your whole body is full of light. But when it is bad, your body is full of darkness. Jesus was warning us long ago what doctors and moms have been telling us for years, getting too close to sin is dangerous. It's bad for you. Be careful what you see. Be careful of the darkness of the world. We cannot be conformed to the pattern of this world, but we must be transformed by the renewing of our minds. And that's what the passage in Romans chapter 12 and verse 2 teaches us. Now let me just share with you, my mother died in 1991 and she would be shocked at what appears on television today. Absolutely shocked. When my mother died, she had never seen a computer. She would be shocked at what you see on laptops and computers today. Years ago, pornography used to be in magazines. But now you can sit down in front of a computer and push a couple buttons uh, and you are polluted by what comes across that computer screen. Think with me. If, if you see something and if you're not careful, you may give way to that lust or putting it in another frame of thought. You may see something and you may want it and you may take it and you may become a thief that item was not yours. Sin is dangerous. Mom's oft-repeated warning was for the good of our eyesight. In hindsight, as it turns out, it was also good for our insight, spiritually as well. Don't let Hollywood, don't let the world, don't let your friends shape your thinking. Rather, allow God's word to renew your mind and shape your thoughts. Now here's the third thing mom often said. She would say, clean your plate. Growing up, if you asked for it, or if I dished it onto my plate, 
I had to eat it all until it was done. You had to clean your plate at my home. For some of us, this was our first introduction to world missions. Do you remember what mom would say? There are starving children in India, Africa, or any other foreign country who would love to eat that. What just happened? That, that discouraged waste. That discouraged greed. That caused you to think of others that were less fortunate rather than just think of yourself. It promoted thinking outside of your own little world. It promoted you to be frugal. It promoted you to be considerate. You had to finish what you started. You had to see a project through. You had to complete it. And in the Bible, we learn some wonderful truths about that. Jesus said, it is finished. Aren't you glad in John 19, 30, that Jesus finished the work that his father sent him to do? He said, it's finished. The Apostle Paul in 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 7 said, I have finished the race. And he did finish the race. In Galatians chapter 6 and verse 9 it says, And let us not grow weary of doing good, for in due season we will reap if we do not give up. And so the idea is, whatever you start, complete, finish. Don't give it up. There's a lot of good theology in that. Then there's the last one, number four. Ask your father. It was always a frustrating time in my life. If I asked my mom for something, maybe it was permission to go someplace or do something or to go to a friend's house. And she would say, ask your father. Now I asked my mom and she said, ask my father. And often I'd go to my father and my, I would ask my father and guess what he said? Ask your mother. And then I'd have to say, Dad, she told me to ask you. Let me just suggest something for us this morning. I believe it is always great advice to ask your father. Your earthly dad, of course, but I'm thinking more this morning of our heavenly father. When we are faced with an important decision and we're not sure what to do, we need to ask the Lord. If we're not sure if it's right or wrong to do something, we need to ask our Heavenly Father. Here's another little piece of advice that Mom often gave. If I wasn't sure if something was right or wrong to do, her answer would always be, picture yourself doing it with your father or me beside you. Did you hear what I just said? Picture yourself doing it with your father or me, my mother, beside you. Friends, if you can't imagine doing something with God at your side, then it is best left undone. In the Bible, in Proverbs 3, verses 5 and 6, it says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge Him, and He will make straight your paths. I'm thankful what James tells us. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask God, who gives generously to all without reproach, and it will be given Him. So once again, Mom's advice guides our way. When you are unsure of what to do, ask your Father. Today, ask your Heavenly Father. I remember as a little boy going to bed at night when I was real young mom would tuck me in mom would pray with me sometimes dad would come into the room and it was usually mom sometimes they'd come together but still it was usually mom as I got a little older I'd go to bed mom would come into the room and she'd say those famous words don't forget to say your prayers that is a tremendous reminder still today. My mother's proverbs, my mother's teachings, my mother's brief quotes, my mother's bits of wisdom are very, very special. And moms have been reminding us of essential life lessons for generations. 
let's review them quickly. Number one, life is uncertain. Life does not come with any guarantees. Expect the unexpected. Be sure your sins will find you out. Take care of the unseen issues of life because God sees them. Number two, don't get too close to the things of this world. Don't let this old world conform you to its molds and standards. You're called to higher things. If everybody else stuck their head in a fire, would you do that? If everybody else jumped off a bridge, would you do that? Number three, clean your plate. Always finish what you start. Don't give up. Don't quit. Number four, ask your father. If God gives you permission, it's all right. You know, this morning, I am so thankful for the things my mother said. And she's been gone for 20 and a half, 28 and a half years. Plus, prior to her death, she had had a stroke. And for six and a half years, she could not speak. She could not talk. I haven't heard my mother speak for 35 plus years. But I'm thankful today for all the memories of my mother and everything that she taught me by these four quick little proverbs that she always said. Here, my hand today is a Bible that I've had for 60 years. It was given to me on my 14th birthday. And I went all the way through Bible school, pastored my first two churches. This Bible is marked up, underlined. I could hand you Timothy or Titus or Corinthians or anything because it would all fall out this morning. But in the fly leaf, it says this in my mother's handwriting. Dan Osterhout. 4337 Southwest 48th Court, Fort Lauderdale, Florida. And it says February 11th, 1960, 14th birthday. That was 60 plus years ago. And there in that fly leaf, it says, sin will keep you from this book or this book will keep you from sin, John Bunyan. And then there's another one that was added later by Robbie Zacharias. Another quote. Robbie Zacharias is struggling with cancer and the prognosis is not good today. Pray for him and his family. But here's this quote from Robbie Zacharias. Sin will take you further than you want to go, keep you longer than you want to stay, and cost you more than you want to pay. What a quote that we need to heed today. Today's Mother's Day. If you have a chance today, why not thank Mom for all that she's taught you? Especially if she has taught you to love Jesus. Happy Mother's Day to all of our moms. There's another little song we sing. It goes like this. Blessed be the tie that binds our hearts in Christian love. The fellowship of kindred minds is like to that above. Before our Father's throne, we pour our ardent prayers. Our fears, our hopes, our aims, our one, our comforts, and our cares. When we asunder part, it gives us inward pain. But we shall still be joined in heart and hope to meet again. Now remember, we're going to meet on the 24th again, just like this. The next couple weeks, we'll be doing videos, and you can watch on YouTube and on our church Facebook page. But uh, just keep hanging on, because we will get back, hopefully, 
the normal soon. I've asked Pastor Paul to come at this time and close our worship service in prayer today. Pastor Paul. Heavenly Father, we thank you for giving us such a beautiful day that we could gather here in the parking lot and Lord, get together as close as uh, we are able to right now to celebrate Mother's Day. And Father, we thank you for each of the moms that are present here with us today. But as Pastor Dan expressed, Lord, I'm so grateful for a very godly mother and a godly mother-in-law. For the influence these women's had on my life. And Father, we just are grateful for the moms that have raised us, that have instructed us. And Father, we just thank you for this time together today as we've been challenged uh, by your word and from your word. And Lord, we just pray that as we uh, go into the this week, Father, that we keep in mind, ask Dad first. And Lord, we just pray your blessing on each one for having been here this day. In your name we pray. Amen. Tell them they're going to dismiss them by Rose, Bob. Tell them they're going to okay, you're going to be dismissed by Rose. Please hold hand. No. Uh, follow the directions as the guys will be giving you to uh, leave the parking lot. Please do not run over the stairs. I would like to see Teresa. Thank you.